So this is a at-home rapid COVID test kit. Today, we're gonna make sure that you know all the steps to go through to do this particular test. Um, so there are, other, there are other versions and brands of this as well. So each one can be a little bit different. We're gonna focus on this one today, but one thing to just keep in mind is whenever you have a um, rapid COVID test, make sure that you read the instructions first, all right? Because each one is gonna have their own specific um, details on how to do it. They're similar, but some things might be a little bit different. This one, we're focusing specifically on this test. Okay, so let's talk about the steps here. The first thing you wanna do before you do anything else is wash your hands, okay? I just wash my hands. I have hand sanitizer here. If you don't, um, if you don't have the ability to wash your hands where you are, make sure you at least do hand sanitizer, okay? So let's do that. We're sanitizing. All right, and make sure your hands are dry from either the hand sanitizer or washing your hands before you start get started with this. You want it to be dry, okay? Just wave them around, get them dry. All right, so you're gonna open your test kit. And first, we're just gonna sort of take an inventory of what's in here. So you'll see, it says on the box, you get two tests in here, and there's a reason for that because you wanna follow up any test you take with another one in the next three days, at least 36 hours after, okay? And that's just to make sure that your results are accurate. If you tested negative, it's just to make sure you're not testing positive the second time around, okay? All right, so let me hold up. I'm gonna hold up the pieces of this to show you what's in here. So you're gonna have two little white packages like that. These are the test cards, okay? So you have one for one test, one for your second one. So we're gonna put one aside for right now because that's gonna be the one that we'll use when we retest, all right? All of these things are in this little plastic tray too, okay? The other thing you're gonna have is two of these. And what these are is the testing solution. So it's a liquid that you're gonna put into a certain spot on the testing card, which we'll go over it, that makes the test work. So each one of these, has a little top that you twist off and it contains the liquid that you use for that. So you only need one for the first one. We're gonna put that one over here. We're gonna set the other one to the side for when we retest. Then you're gonna have two of these nasal swabs. I bet you a bunch of people have done a nasal swab somewhere along the way, whether it was in a clinic setting or if you did one of these tests before. So you're gonna have two of these. Pull them apart and you're gonna put one here for your test for right now and save the other one. So these, these pieces I'm gonna put in here. To save for later. The other things that you'll find in your test kit, very important, are instructions. This is what you're gonna wanna look at. In, in tandem with this video, make sure that you do also read the instructions, okay? And they're in here in English and Spanish, okay? So these are what the instructions look like. And that's what we're gonna be following as we go through the steps of this test, all right? We have pictures, which is really helpful because sometimes it's easier to visualize things than it is to just read them, all right? And then the other thing you're gonna have is this information sheet about COVID, okay? Just telling you some facts about COVID and telling you a little bit about the test itself. So you can look over that as well. All right, so I'm gonna put this stuff aside. What I'm gonna keep over here is one test card, one nasal swab, the um, solution that goes in there, and my instructions. Everything else I'm gonna put aside so I don't have a big old mess while I'm doing this. So we're ready to start doing our test. I'll, I might hold stuff up, but I want you to know that when you're doing this test yourself, you need to keep everything flat down. Okay, so if I'm holding something up a little bit, don't, don't copy me on that. It's just to show you. You want all your stuff to lay flat or your card to lay flat throughout the time you're doing this test. All right, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and open this. There's actually a little place to tear the test card, okay? All right, so I'm gonna hold this up for you, but again, when you do this, I want you to keep it flat down. All right, and this is what you're looking for, okay? 
you should see in the front a blue line. That's what's called your control line. And what that means is that the test at this point, you just wanna make sure that that blue line's there. That means the test is, um, is, is functional, basically. So if you don't see that blue line, you wanna not use this test. So you wanna get another test and do that one. You should see that blue line, that blue control line when you open this up, all right? And then you're gonna open it like a book. All right, you'll see the blue control line in there too. Do not touch this area, all right? This area that I'm gesturing towards over here, that's where the testing fluid's gonna go up. You don't wanna touch that, that can mess up the test. All right, so just keep that, you know, keep your fingers away from that keep kids away from this, keep pets away from this. You want it to be, um, you want it to be able to sort of sit and rest without being jostled around or touched, all right? Okay, so, and then over here, you're gonna see two holes and we're gonna talk about what those two holes are for, all right? So what we wanna do is lay this down flat, okay? So that's how, when we're administering the test, we're gonna have this flat on the table like an open book, all right? So the next thing we wanna to do to get the test activated, you're gonna get out your dropper bottle, all right? I think that this is the most difficult part of this test. Um, it's, it's a little tricky, but once you've done it a couple of times, I think you get better at it, all right? So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna take the liquid from this and we're gonna place six drops into the top hole. All right, it's the top one, not the bottom one, okay? So we're gonna, and you're gonna make sure that you do it straight up and down. You're not gonna do it sideways like this. You're gonna do it straight up and down, all right? And it'll be six drops exactly, and make sure that the tip of this doesn't touch down here. You're gonna do it from sort of like up here, all right? And you're gonna try and do it really slowly because it's hard to count the drops if you can't, if they come out quick, all right? So it's a little bit of a process, but, um, We'll do it and I'll show you how to make it work. So this is like one of those old juice bottle things. You're gonna twist off the top. Little tricky, be careful. So look, you hold it kind of like a pen, straight up and down. What you wanna do is do six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got your six drops in there. That was probably the best I've ever done it. <laughs> and it's after some practice. Okay, so six drops, all right? You wanna make sure it's six. And once you're done with that, you're gonna throw this away, all right? Okay, so you've got the card ready for what you're gonna do next, all right? This is where you get into the nasal swab. And I will warn you that I am actually going to do the nasal swab on camera. If you find that really gross, just don't watch it. Um, but I just wanna show you how to do it, um, just so you know. Okay, here we go. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna open this. You can see through the thing that there's one end is the cotton swab end and one end is the stick end, all right? You wanna open it at the stick end, which is where it's like set up to be opened anyway. So we're gonna open it like this. And don't touch the tip of this to anything except when you do the swab in your nose. Okay, so you'll see the part with the cotton swab. Okay, you're gonna, I'll tell you what I'm doing before I do it, okay? You're gonna make sure that the whole of this cotton tip goes up in your nose. So it should be half an inch to a quarter of an inch up there. Um, and it's just make sure if you get the full tip up there, then you're, you're good. All right, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna do both nostrils. You're gonna use sort of medium pressure and you're gonna do five circles in each one. All right, so you're touching the, the sort of edges of the inside of your nose and doing five circles. And then you're gonna do five circles in the other one. So, and it's, you should take about 15 seconds to do this. So don't do it super fast. Um, make sure that you are sort of really getting in there. All right, so I'm gonna do that now. If you think this is gross, don't watch. But I'm gonna demonstrate, all right? So I'm gonna go up in my nostril. You'll see the whole cotton tip is in there. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. All right, that might've been a little fast. So I'll do it slower on the other side. 
I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. And again, make sure you get both of your nostrils, okay? So that was the grossest part. All right, so we're gonna go back to our test card. Okay, so again, if I pick, please don't pick this up. If I pick it up, it's just to show you what I'm doing, okay? When you do it, you need to hold it flat. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this with our nasal swab on it. We're gonna stick it up through the bottom hole of our card and we're gonna push it until we see the tip of it coming up through the top hole. So you're going through the bottom hole and just pushing it up until you can see it in the top hole. All right, so it's behind that little middle section. And then this is really important. You're gonna turn it to the right all the way three times. So twist it, one, two, three. And what that does is it mixes your nasal swab in with the solution that's in there. Okay, that's really important. And you can get false results if you don't do that. So make sure you're doing those three twists, okay? And then what you're gonna do, you'll see there's a little sticky part right here. It's like a little thing to peel off on the right-hand side. You're gonna peel that off and you'll see it is sticky. And what you're gonna do is close the book. And you're gonna leave the swab in there. Don't take the swab out. It should look like a lollipop the whole time. You're not gonna take the swab out the whole time the test is running. You're not gonna take the swab out ever again, all right? So you're gonna push it down like that and leave it flat on the table. Don't pick it up, don't swing it around or anything. You're gonna leave it flat on the table for a full 15 minutes while the test runs, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna wait a full 15 minutes before you read this test. So you should have a timer with you as well. I should have mentioned that before, um, but 15 minutes exactly. And then you wanna read the test after 15 minutes, but no longer than 30 minutes after you started. So that's what will give you the right result. It might show up faster than that, but just wait for the full 15 minutes until you read it and like have your final result, okay? But I wanna to talk to you about how to read the results of this. So the first thing is the control line should turn pink, all right? And the control line, again, is the thing that tells you just that the test is functional, all right? It doesn't tell you anything about your own personal results. It's just saying, yes, the test is, is working, okay? So if you have just the control line after 15 minutes, all right? So if you have something that looks like this, control line, but nothing where it says sample, really nothing at all, it's just white, that's a negative result, okay? If you have any sort of line of control, even if it's really faint, and we've done this where we've gotten really, really faint lines, that's still a positive result, okay? If you see any kind of line there whatsoever at sample, that's a positive result, and that means that COVID has been detected in your sample. Okay, so if you, um, if you are with somebody who maybe their eyesight is a little bit better than yours, if you just need a double check, if you have somebody to double check it, that's really helpful um, because it can be easy to miss sometimes. Sometimes that line isn't very dark. Sometimes that sample line is, is really dark. Um, when I had COVID once, it was really, really dark. Um, but then when I tested one time before, it was really light. So. It doesn't mean like you have COVID particularly bad, or it's just the way the test does it, okay? So you're gonna look out real closely for any sort of line on that sample, all right? If you don't have the control line, or if, you, um, if, you, if your control line doesn't turn purple, that purplish pink color when you do the test, then that test is invalidated, all right? That's what the control line is there for. It should turn pink at this point, okay? And it should definitely be there. If those things don't happen, then you wanna throw this away and do a different test, okay? Just that's just one of those sort of quality control things. And again, if you need to see what a potential positive can look like, look at the instructions in your kit. It'll show you how faint that line can be and still be a positive result, okay? Between 15 and 30 minutes, okay? 
you read your results, you can just throw the test away at that point. You might want to take a picture of it um, just to show what your result is, just in case you need to show someone, your doctor or someone. Um, but you can just throw this away in the trash. It's not like biohazard material or anything like that. So you can throw it out in your regular trash. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to test again, like I said, um, at least 36 hours later, between 36 hours and three days, so 36 and 72 hours later, just to test your results again, okay? Um, and that's why you have two test kits in your one box. There are other versions of this test kit as well. I mean, there are other brands of it where the instructions may be a little bit different. That's why it's important to always read the instructions to make sure you're doing you know, the right steps for that version of the test. And they all are kind of similar. So the steps are similar, but it might be like for some, you might have a different amount of drops that you have to put into that, the, the little hole or like something like that. Just make sure you, you double check that um, you're doing the right steps for the test that you have, okay? Um, but for this one, those are the steps specifically for this. Um, it's called the Binax. It's the Abbott Binax test. You'll see on the card that there's, on the right side of it, there's two little lines. Let me show you on the unused test where to write that information. It makes sense actually to do, to write your name and the date on it after, after the test is complete, just so you don't jostle around the card at all. So once you've read your results, then put your name and the date on it, okay? That's just, an, that's just a way to make sure that you're not moving your test kit around too much. Okay, so look at this one. This is, the, this is our other test. There we go. All right, so you should see the two lines right there. There they are. So that's where you write your name and the date, okay? I hope this, this was helpful, and I hope that you're able to use your um, test kits just to make sure you're staying safe. Um, it's a, it's a big, using the test kits is kind of a big part of, of kind of the next phase of how we're talking about COVID is just making sure that you're staying um, safe. And if you get exposed to someone that you know pretty quickly that um, what your status is.